Good evening. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Lakewood City Council in Lakewood, Colorado on September 24th, 2018 in Council Chambers. Will the clerk please call the roll? Paul? Here. Johnson? Here. Vincent? Here. Beta? Here. Franks? Here. Royball? Here. Gutwine? Here. Skilling? Here. Harrison? Here. Abel? Here. LeBure? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. Well, good evening to everybody who's come out this evening. Uh, it looks like it actually might be a, a short, quiet night. What do you think? <laughs> oh, here they come. Look out. But uh, again, we do appreciate you, you taking the time to come out. We know your time is valuable. I'd also like to uh, welcome those who may be tuning in on Channel 8 or online or checking us out on a later date. I ask those in attendance, if you do have a cell phone, please put it on silence. If you'd rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, we'll remain standing for a moment of silent prayer. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Okay. So this is the point in the meeting where the public is invited to address the city council on items that did not appear on the agenda. All comments should be directed to the city council. I ask that all in attendance observe the decorum of the city council chambers and refrain from applause or audible support or discord with the speaker. There is a three minute time limit. Uh, and this little box here on your end will be green until two and a half and then it'll go yellow. And then at three minutes, it'll go red and I will politely ask you to wrap it up. And um, if you do wanna speak on anything that is on the agenda, there's no public comment on um, ordinance 2018-18, that's on first reading. There will be public comment on resolutions six and seven as well as uh, item number 10. So with that, first up we have Shauna, and then Sandy, Monica, Matt, and Lee. Come on down. Good evening, welcome. Greeting Mr. Mayor and council members. My name is Shauna Fritzler. I'm the mother of a freshman at Lakewood High School, uh, Jeffco business owner, and the legislative chair for the Jeffco Parent Teacher Association, who I am representing tonight. Your concern about youth access to tobacco products is to be applauded. In August 2018, the Jefferson County Board of Health passed a resolution designated youth vaping a public health crisis in our county. And in September 2018, the Food and Drug Administration declared that teenage use of electronic cigarettes has reached an epidemic proportion. The most popular youth electronic vaping device is the Juul. And the nicotine content of one Juul pod is the equivalent of an entire pack of cigarettes. Rapid addiction to nicotine, long-term use of combustible cigarettes, as well as an increased likelihood of using marijuana, have been correlated with youth vaping. In April of this year, our Board of Jeffco Council PTA formally endorsed an initiative by Citizens for a Healthier Lakewood for strong tobacco-free laws in Lakewood. Such laws included requiring retailers to have a license to sell any form of tobacco, including e-cigarettes, requiring retail clerks who sell tobacco to be 18 years or older, prohibiting self-service displays of tobacco, and implementing effective enforcement of licensure and other tobacco laws. We also realize that protecting our youth from the immediate and long-term harmful effects of tobacco use requires a multifaceted approach. In addition to these strong policies, parents have an important role in educating and speaking to their children about healthy choices, and school staff must continue to actively advocate for and support drug-free environments. There is good evidence that licensing tobacco retailers is an effective way to reduce illegal sales of tobacco products to minors. Tobacco retail licensing, TRL, in Lakewood would help decrease youth access to all tobacco products, including vaping devices, thereby decreasing the likelihood of nicotine addiction, subsequent use of marijuana, and lifelong addiction to combustible cigarettes. 
Additionally, TRL and Lakewood would not only greatly benefit young people, but will also provide health benefits for other residents of Lakewood and neighboring cities. The city of Lakewood has approximately 250 tobacco retailers and would be the largest city in the state to pass a TRL ordinance, setting an important precedent for other large cities in Colorado. We encourage Lakewood to be a leader and to take this important step to help protect its youth. The Jeffco Council PTA Board of Directors strongly supports an ordinance requiring TRL in Lakewood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sandy? Good evening. You're welcome. Uh, good evening. My name is Sandy Weathers. I'm a resident of Ward 3. And I had the privilege of attending the ad hoc development dialogue meeting on Thursday. And I did have a question, and I just wanted to echo the, the comment that I made that night here. And uh, that's regarding the alternate proposal that's being included um, with the 26 recommendations made by the Planning Commission. So um, as a volunteer, I just really wanted to say I, rec I truly commend the efforts of the Planning Commission. I know that they took eight months to review and to, to come up with their proposals. They asked for a lot of data, and they were very thoughtful. So what I witnessed on Thursday night, I just felt that um, those recommendations were being disregarded and that we, there was just a sentiment, okay, we have this alternate proposal and we're not sure about all the details. We're going to make a bracket, 10 to 40 percent. We don't know what it is yet, but this is the recommendation and this is what we're moving forward with. Um, if I was on the Planning Commission, I would, I would just be very sensitive to that. I would say, okay, I committed eight months of my time, and it seems that my voice is not going to be heard, even though that's the whole intent of the Planning Commission. So I just wanted to say, from, from my viewpoint, that, that's how I saw it. I know these codes and these changes are a sore spot for a lot of people in the community. Um, if you go back and you look at the, the, the growth dialogue, um, it, it just, you know, there's people who have been mad since the days of Mike Rock, and there's just this need to make some changes to the codes. And I think the Planning Commission did a very good job, and they looked at it, and they looked at the data, and I think they, they heard a lot of voices. And the ad hoc committee, even though I think it's great, we had about 20 people at the last meeting. I think that's great, but it wasn't on Channel 8, not like the Planning Commissions are like their meetings are. So I just, I'm here today to ask council, please, however you proceed, I just want it to be thoughtful and sincere and please respect the work of the Planning Commission. And that's all, thank you. Monica? Good evening. You have a partner that didn't want to join you down here? You know what? My partner is the reason I do most things, that's uh, for sure. That's great. That's well, fun. welcome. <laughs> I told her that I was coming to talk to the people who made important decisions about the city of Lakewood. I am Monica Bulick, and I am the director of community health within um, Centura Health, of which St. Anthony Hospital is part of the Centura Health System. As a nonprofit mission-based hospital, our commitment is to not only provide excellent care in our clinics and in our hospitals, but also in communities. We're committed to healthy communities. And so I thank you all for considering the tobacco retail licensing proposal. Um, we are committed to using data to look at our decisions when we're treating patients, and we believe that data can be used well to, um, to make decisions about the tobacco retail licensing as well. Um, tobacco use in the past four years has increased by 200% among youth. And we know that youth who start using tobacco are more likely to use other substances later on. So with that, we want to share this data. And I'd like to read a letter that our CEO, Peter Powers, wrote to you all this evening. I'm here on behalf of Peter. Dear Mayor Adam Paul and the members of Lakewood City Council, 
St. Anthony Hospital, part of Centura Health, is proud to provide high quality health care to Lakewood residents and to be an active, intrinsic member of the Lakewood business community. As a nonprofit mission based health care system, our mission is to both care for the ill and to promote the health of the communities we serve. We strive to inspire health, partnering with community stakeholders to deliver personalized care that meets the needs of individuals and providing them with the tools that foster good health in mind, body, and spirit. As a community member with a mission focused on health and our pursuit of building flourishing communities, St. Anthony Hospital is pleased to see that the City of Lakewood is considering licensing real retailers that sell tobacco. As tobacco, um, as tobacco use does not promote the health of our community. While this is a choice that residents can make, it is important to monitor the sale of tobacco products to youth who, due to their developmental stage, are not yet able to make informed decisions about the use of tobacco substances and who are more likely to become addicted to such substances. As a healthcare provider, we look at data to inform our operations and guide our practices. In the case of tobacco retail licensing, we know that 90% of tobacco users start before the age of 18. The 2017 Healthy Kids Colorado survey demonstrated at least 33% of youth are using a tobacco product, with 27% of high school students in Colorado using e-cigarettes. It's well documented that use of tobacco products is associated with increased risks of addiction to other drugs. As a nonprofit hospital with a vested interest in making our community healthier, we use data and community input to understand the community's priorities. Substance abuse has arisen as a priority in our community. So the community is telling us that this is something important upon which we can focus. Please know that we are proud to partner with Lakewood Community. We're grateful for your leadership as you consider requiring the licensing of tobacco retailers as part of your commitment to the long-term health of Lakewood. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming out. Matt, come on down, and then we have Lee after that. Good evening. Good evening. Towards me. Hello, my name is Matt Osborne. I'm a resident at 11810 West 20th Avenue. Um, we started a small commercial bank 10 years ago out in Parker, but I've been a banker my whole life and have a little bit of experience in dealing with commercial contractors. So I think I probably know a little bit more about what happened here than what first meets the eye. But I guess I called uh, Miss Johnson and she encouraged me to come express my wishes, saying that it probably would be helpful. So these are two pictures of a sign that was put on my property. Uh, fortunately, the contractor did con come up to my door and ask, you know, because it kind of fringes a somewhat on the easement of the road as well as my property. And when he told me what the sign was going to say, I said, that's got to be about one of the dumbest things I've ever heard of. And... All that sign says is there is construction in the neighborhood. You wouldn't know that because you can't read it during the day. He, he agreed with me that that sign was probably, uh, that it was ridiculous. And he said, you know, it's cost me $15,000 to rent this thing to put it here. So, you know, I think, you know, knowing what I know about dealing with contractors, was that sign probably a very specific line item? Probably not. It, it was addressed a bunch of safety issues, I'm sure, in any kind of given contract. But what I think this is evidence of is the people that administer those contracts and the common sense of the end result is missing. <laughs> because when you got a sign up there that costs $15,000 that you can't read during the day, that's a problem. <laughs> so, you know, I think the problem is in the communication between how the contracts get administered when somebody sits down and says, how are we gonna actually administer? Let's go through this, make sure we get the end results. And something's missing there in that dialogue. So, you know, this is just one evidence. You can also see there, there's no sidewalk there. For 15 grand, you probably could have had a sidewalk there. So 
That's, and then one other side point in regards to the tobacco, video games for high schoolers is a huge problem <laughs> that all parents deal with. And boy, if the city came out with some programs, <laughs> that would help a lot of parents so that they don't, these kids just don't see it from us. So, but I appreciate the time. I know it's a thankless job, particularly from the wards. I really appreciate uh, Ms. Johnson has a fabulous reputation in her neighborhood that, you know what, call her. She responds, and she did, so I appreciate that. Great. Thank you. Lee? Good evening. Welcome. First time here. <laughs> All right. My name's Lee Walmire. I'm a resident of Lakewood. Uh, like the like the area I'm in, I think everything's been pretty fair uh, till here recently last year when everybody got the hailstorm. Uh, I had my roof repaired, and it failed at numerous times. And the problem I was having with your building inspectors is I don't believe they all are qualified to do the job uh the last <laughs> last inspection that was done failed the contractor called the city up and said hey i fixed it didn't fix it got a report that the inspector came back and made a note that uh, contractor failed to fix the issue that was promised to myself and the con then the inspector so anyways, we end up going to court. I have to pay for a roof that now leaks and is not put on properly. And because of the inspection reports and getting a, an approved roof when they know it's never been fixed and the problems have never been addressed, I ended up having to pay the contractor for a failed roof. And I just think that you know the inspectors that come out there, the investigator that came out last Tuesday comes up on my roof in sandals and he's pointing out well this ain't a big deal <laughs> it's not correct the flashing is not correct and he says well you know i don't know how i don't know how buildings go together i was like really you're in charge of all this so i guess my my concern is is that uh you know the inspectors they need to get some kind of training uh you know i mean they're there for us to make sure that the contractors or to do what they're supposed to do. There's international building codes. And when I asked the investigator, inspector, I guess is what he is, Mike Sizemore, he says, well, we can pick and choose how we wanna, what codes or what issues we wanna address or not use or use. I says, how can that be? If it's an international code, you know, ice and water shield, that's, that's recommended everywhere. He says, we don't recommend you, we don't enforce you that you have to do this on your roof. Well, it's a failure that's going to happen if you don't, just like flashing. I said, the flashing needs to go on first. Well, it's there, part of it. And I said, well, yeah, but it's not correct. You guys are the ones that are supposed to know what, how things go together so that when you come out and inspect, instead of looking for nails, you ought to be looking for all the other flaws in it. And I just don't think they're doing their job correctly. And like I say, now I had to pay a full price for a roof that still leaks. And because of the approval reports, they, there's no cause for them to even come back and fix it. So now I have to pay another contractor to come back and fix the rest of it. So I guess my issue is that there should be more training, get qualified people that know what they're doing. Uh, and some of the comments this guy made is just, he's, he don't know what he's doing. And I don't know where you go to address it. Uh, I talked to Ramey, and she said that, you know, the only way people's going to know is if I come here and tell people. So that's what I'm doing. Cool. Cool. Yeah, thank you for coming out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still got a leaky roof. Uh, well, that part's not cool, but there, there's certain – I'll get back as soon as we're done. So, All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Anybody else who didn't sign up, come on down.
And on your way back, could you please leave the clerk your name and address, your information? Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Kathy Vagalis, and I'm a uh, Lakewood resident. I'm in Ward 3. Um, I had a couple things. First, I wanted to echo what um, Sandy Weathers had mentioned earlier about the ad hoc uh, development dialogue. I, I attended the meeting the other night, and I wasn't quite sure what the purpose was, because <laughs> it seemed like there weren't enough factual uh, data that the committee had, um, and they were relying on what the data was that the, the Planning Commission had done. And I understood they also had spent several months going over the, the information to make the Planning Commission decisions. Um, I just didn't think it was maybe the best use of time of everyone to be reiterating and then trying to change without having factual issues there. The second thing is um, we had our Ward 3 meeting last Saturday, and some of my neighbors, I live in Lakewood Estates, we brought to the attention of Pete and uh, Mike that we have a, um, an addiction center that has moved into our neighborhood. Um, we're, we're very concerned. We saw so many cars parking in and around the area, and we didn't really know what was going on. Um, and so one of the neighbors, not, I, it wasn't me, but um, they did a lot of research and found out this uh, company has come in from Florida. They bought the property and um, have it all set up, I think, fairly illegal. But um, they, uh, they never notified the neighbors, and it's a for-profit business that makes a lot of money in other places. Um, the one person who's the head of this has um, testified before Congress. He was called to be testified before Congress. And there's been some issues with predatory practices among these uh, addiction center companies. So we would just hope that um, the council would consider trying to look into this matter and see if it's a legal use. It's a commercial business in a neighborhood, a residential neighborhood, and to see if there's anything that can be done, whether it's um, changing the um, zoning <laughs> designations and what is allowed or isn't allowed, and also to consider how it affects with uh, or competes with Airbnbs, uh, because we think this is a this is not a good thing to inject into the neighborhoods, and it's not a NIMBY thing. It's it's more why is a commercial business being in a residential neighborhood? So thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, I will close public comment. Um, Shauna, thanks for coming out. I think you are all aware, all well aware, Monica as well, that we're going to be having our first blush of the proposed ordinance next week next Monday night, so we might see you again, but we'll also have a lot of folks from your group represented. Um, Sandy and Kathy, appreciate, we'll uh, encourage you to continue to come and be part of the uh, uh, development dialogue as it, it works its way through. And then um, Mr. Osborne, um, I'm not quite sure w as far as the message board goes, but we can we can figure that out. When something like that happens also, you can call Public Works or just call the city right away so we can get somebody out to see if what the sign's doing or not doing because it is a requirement of the contractor. And we also have an app called Request Lakewood, so you can do it on your app. That way uh, you can get right to the people, but we can certainly look and have a conversation with the contractor. Um, uh, I have an old background in road work and construction, and those types of things are required, whether it's CDOT, uh, the county, the city of Lakewood, to do some notification. But it doesn't notify if it doesn't work. So please reach out, and we'll get somebody out there right away if that happens again. And then, um, Lee, we have your information. Let's see what's going on as far as what happened internally on our end. And uh, we'll certainly take a, a look at that. We know that you both have much better things to do on a Monday night. But again, in that situation, you know, reach out, whether it's you called your council members, but we also have uh, Caitlin Galt who handles these things immediately and can start to dig into that. She's our uh, customer service specialist that operates here too. So 
you can reach out to them. So we'll we'll figure out. We have your information, and I'll make sure our deputy city manager hands that. Okay, thank you. All right, with that, Ben, executive report. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just a couple things to cover with you this evening. Uh, first is a good news item. I wanted to share uh, that we had over 50 employees participate with Brothers Redevelopment Inc. Uh, to provide rehabilitation to several properties in Lakewood uh, last week. Uh, and the employees did a variety of work uh, from, from helping uh, elder, uh, elderly residents with yard work or uh, painting. Uh, I participated in one as well. And uh, we repainted an entire house and garage in about six hours. So it, it was pretty incredible to see uh, about 20 people come together to tackle a project like that. Uh, we also partnered with uh, West Metro Fire. So it was great to see both organizations working together uh, with Brothers Redevelopment on that. Um, uh, we also, I also wanted to let you know that uh, Kathy is continuing to work on addressing homelessness uh, with a reg regional group. Uh, we hope to have something come back uh, in the near future on that. Um, we're working pretty diligently also to address uh, uh, cold weather shelters um, as the cooler nights are coming. And uh, I think we've started to figure some things out uh, with, Meso with uh, West Metro Fire on that and dealing with inspections and, and all of that. Um, as far as up Coming agenda items, uh, we have, as I think you all are aware, uh, the non-cigarette uh, tobacco retailer licensing ordinance coming up next week, as well as uh, the dockless bicycle and scooter uh, discussion. So look forward to both of those. And then uh, one other change on the agenda, uh, for October 8th, the short-term rental licensing ordinance is gonna be delayed um, to a further date as we continue to refine uh, things there. So uh, that's all for the executive report. Thank you, sir. I thought you were gonna say we were gonna postpone the October 1st meeting for the Broncos game. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's not in the cards. So. And Kathy, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mention the group home issue. Um, and we, we can get you more, but it's, from what I'm hearing and the information we have, it's most likely a protected uh, group home under the Fair F Housing Act. And it's interesting, we'll probably see more of these with the opioid epidemic and, and things along those lines. I know there's another community up north that's seeing the same thing. So we can try to get you that information. And I think Mayor Pro Tem Roy Ball said they looked into a little bit of it as well to get that. Thanks. Councilor Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. I don't know if this is the appropriate time actually to say something, but I did speak at great length with Lee on the phone regarding his roof and uh, encouraged him to come because frankly, I had the very same issue and uh, had to hire an independent inspector actually to come. It's cost us $3,300 and we're going to small claims court. I have tried for several months to see what kind of credentialing our roofers, inspectors have, and I hope that we can take a look at this. I think there is an issue there and just wanted to back him up. Thank you. Uh, yeah, certainly nobody was dismissing him at all. Certainly we'll want to look into it and get you those answers. So. Okay, next up we have the consent agenda. Yeah. Since we have, so we have presentation, well, we'll read it in. The use of the consent agenda has been made to expedite council action. It contains both resolutions and first reading ordinances. Resolutions are items of a routine nature. Members of the public will have an opportunity in a moment to comment on any of the proposed resolutions. First reading ordinance appear on the agenda only for the purpose of setting future public hearing dates and ordering the newspaper publication of the proposed ordinance. No public comments will be heard this evening on first reading ordinances. The public will have the opportunity to comment on the proposed ordinances during the scheduled public hearings on the dates set tonight by the city council. 
Any council member may request an item on the consent agenda be removed for separate discussion and action under general business. With that, will the clerk please read the consent agenda into the record? The consent agenda consists of items six through nine inclusive. Item six, resolution 2018-40, approving the 2019 operating plan and proposed budget for the Lakewood West Colfax Business Improvement District. Item seven, resolution 2018-41, approving the 2019 operating plan and proposed budget for the Alameda Corridor Business Improvement District. Item 8, Ordinance 02018-18, adding a new Section 2.02.040 to the Lakewood Municipal Code, clarifying the definition of a one-half term of office for the Mayor and members of the City Council, as used in Section 2.6 paren B of the Lakewood Home Rule Charter. And Item 9, accepting the minutes of the Lakewood Planning Commission's meeting of July 11th, 2018. Thank you very much. I will now... Uh Ask Robert Smith, our Interim Director of Economic Development, to uh, come down and lead us into our first two resolutions. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor, members of City Council. Truly a pleasure to be with you here on this uh, autumn Monday evening. Uh, I'm with the Economic Development Office, as the Mayor mentioned, um, and as you know, we carry the banner for a lot of Lakewood's economic development initiatives as we go forward. But when we accomplish truly great things, when we get really wonderful things going on in, in the uh, community, it's usually because we're standing shoulder to shoulder with our strategic partners and working collaboratively to make things happen. So it's uh, my distinct pleasure to uh, reintroduce you to uh, a couple of our strong partners uh, this evening, uh, one being the Lakewood uh, West Colfax Business Improvement District Executive Director and uh, President, uh, as well as the Executive Director of the Alameda Corridor Business Improvement District. Before you is a uh, business item of approving those, uh, uh, the operating budgets and the, uh, or excuse me, the operating plan and the budgets for each of those uh, organizations. We're compelled to do that legislatively once a year, and so this is our opportunity. Uh, these are uh, very passionate individuals, and they like to talk a lot about what's going on in their neck of the woods. And so we wanted to afford them the opportunity to let you know what's happening in uh, their particular ends of the woods. With your kind permission, I'll introduce you to all three of these gentlemen all at once, and that'll give me a moment of not doing the stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down uh, moment. So all three of these uh, folks will come up here, beginning with Mr. Uh, Tom Quinn, who's the executive director of the Alameda Corridor Business Improvement District. And then we will move on to Mr. Bill Marino and Mr. Kevin Yoshida from the Lakewood uh, West Colfax Business Improvement District. And without further ado, I'll bring them on up and let them talk about uh, the good things going on in our community in those areas. Great. Thank you. Mr. Quinn. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Uh, Tom Quinn, Executive Director for the Alameda Corridor Business Improvement District. Happy to be back in front of you again to present our annual operating plan and budget for your review. Uh, and of course, happy to answer any questions at the end. Uh, this is a process we go through, particularly for you new people, this is a process we go through every September. Um, business Improvement Districts are... I'm sorry. A little out of practice. Um, business improvement districts that are required to submit their annual operating plans and budgets by September 30th of each year to the municipality in which they're located. So that's why we're here tonight. And I'm going to go ahead and start. Let's see. Um, so our operating plan has identified three key priorities from our board of directors. These have remained constant over the years. Uh, economic development and marketing, corridor beautification, and corridor safety. And I'll talk about all three of those in some detail. Um, this slide is intended just to give you a little overview of the difference between Alameda Gateway Community Association and the Alameda Corridor Business Improvement District. We sometimes get questions about that. They are two different organizations, but often lumped together as Alameda Gateway. So the Alameda Gateway Community Association is a nonprofit organization under Colorado law. It has its own volunteer board of directors. It's funded primarily through membership dues and advertising revenue from the Gateway Guide, uh, and focused primarily on connecting the community. So connecting our citizens, our nonprofit organizations, and our businesses. Uh, the Alameda Corridor bid is actually a quasi-governmental 
organization under Colorado law, under what we call the Colorado Business Improvement District Act, created by and with the district was created by Lakewood City Ordinance in 2003. Um, business owners in the district voted to assess themselves um, property tax 5.72 mills at that time and that uh, continues to this day. Uh, the bid is governed by a seven member board of directors appointed by you, the Lakewood City Council. You'll see some new appointments showing up on your agenda in the near future. Uh, and the business improvement district actually pays the Gateway Association for administrative and economic development services. So I'm actually an employee of the Gateway Association under contract with the Business Improvement District. So move on to so what have we done in the past year? Uh, not all of you were here last year, I know, but we'll go through some of the projects that we've, uh, we've been working on. Keeping in mind that any project that we start has what I call an arc of planning to it, mean, meaning from the first time you have a conversation about it until the time it's actually built. Sometimes that process can take a couple of years. So um, economic development and marketing. What have we done in the past year? Um, we've hired a business engagement and outreach specialist uh, whose job is to go out in the community and make co regular contacts with the businesses that are part of the Business Improvement District. And she's been quite busy doing that since she started in March. Um, we're also going through a process of rebranding, or I should say branding, the Business Improvement District. It's never had its own independent brand. It's always gone under the Alameda Gateway brand. And the, our board of directors met back in March for a retreat and felt very strongly that the bid needed to have its own brand to stand side by side with Alameda Gateway. And so we're almost completely done with that process, and you'll see our new brand rolling out here uh, in October. Uh, website redesign. Our website was quite antiquated and we wanted to create something new that would be uh, user-friendly for the residents of Lakewood as well as our businesses uh, and people interested in investing in the corridor. That you will also see in October. Uh, it's quite exciting. We have a lot of stuff going on right now, obviously. Um, and a new Alameda Gateway Guide magazine. We previously had a biannual publication uh, for the time being, it's going to be annual, but we're redesigning it to include more content uh, and a, a higher quality publication. So what else are we doing and under uh, sustainability? Our board of directors identified sustainability as a key core value. And our first program this year was a partnership with Belmar and Zero Waste Services to uh, move uh, the Festival Italiano event, which is the largest event in the city of Lakewood, uh, towards zero waste status. So the bid provided $5,000 in funding towards that program uh, this year. Uh, it's a five-year plan to move from 20% diversion of waste to composting and recycling to 90% in the fifth year. So this was our first year. It was an experiment, um, and it was quite successful. Uh, Councilor Franks came out and helped out uh, one day, and uh, we actually diverted quite a bit of waste. We don't have the final numbers yet, but it's, it's exciting. It was a good first step. Uh, Belmar was very happy with it. And uh, so were the citizens of Lakewood who uh, came out to the event. Mayor Paul, you, you came out too. <laughs> and thank you. Well, we appreciated you just coming by to, to congratulate Frank's us. Was really and, there to volunteer. Yes. <laughs> Getting your hands dirty. And um, by the way, that opportunity is always open. Next year, it's only you know, 11 and a half months away. Um, the other area, transportation and mobility. So we received a quick win grant from Jefferson County Public Health and the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment to install bike racks. We got the first four installed in the Van Street Garage in Belmar. The other four are awaiting um, some permits that we have to get, obviously. Uh, we have to go through city permitting processes, so we're almost done with that. Um, bike share, uh, that's something we've been discussing with the city, but you're gonna have a study session on that next week. So. Uh, we'll leave that for now. Uh, event sponsorships, we've greatly expanded our event sponsorships in 2018 uh, to try to uh, really roll out the bid name in a, a lot more publicly so people know what the bid does and what it's, what it's here to accomplish. Um, the whole purpose behind events is to draw visitors to the corridor, to create a great amenity for the people of the city of Lakewood, uh, and to draw economic interest from outside. And so just a couple of examples, we sponsored German Fest this year, uh, which is a great outside event, uh, not directly a city event. Um, Lake City of Lakewood Party on the Plaza and the first Thursday parties, uh, Lakewood Earth Day, 
We're also a sponsor of, of uh, Cider Days coming up here in a couple of weeks. So uh, stop by and see us there. Uh, another component of, of the bid strategy, community partnerships. Uh, we're a longtime financial sponsor for the Boys and Girls Clubs of Jefferson County, as well as Young Ameritown, uh, providing them with funding to be able to operate. And that this really cross cuts uh, through multiple areas, through economic development, education, uh, public safety, uh, multiple areas that this impacts. And we're really uh, proud to be working with these fine organizations. Uh, corridor beautification. Uh, we continue uh, with the Art in the Commons program uh, in partnership with, uh, the, with the city, Heritage, Culture, and the Arts. So we have six pieces on, that are currently on the plaza. They change out every year in May. Uh, you may have stopped to see the, their, um, the six we have out there. I just put in pictures of the four to save another five seconds. Um, anyway, so uh, it's an ongoing program that we really enjoy. Arts Along Alameda is a program to purchase sculptures and place them at different locations on the corridor. And we had kind of a new component to it in the, in the past year. Um, we call it Art at Your Business. So the first two placements, um, the Tree of Life, uh, the Village at Belmar near the entrance, a uh, wonderful sculpture by an artist named Carl Jensen from Wyoming. Uh, and uh, Nick's the lab uh, in front of the Goodyear store. So if you've ever been to the Goodyear store, he sits right there in front of it. Uh, and we're looking for some additional placements uh, over the next few months. Our, um, our biggest project this year is at Metro, the Metro West Housing 5800 development. This project uh, of Metro West Housing Solutions will be opening, have its grand opening on October 9th. Um, it's not quite done. You can see our artist Christopher Weed designed this lovely piece. Um, the guys were out there pouring the concrete a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's now cured and they will be placed prior to October 9th. Actually, they're supposed to be placed early next week. So you'll be able to see them at the dedication uh, in a couple of weeks. And this, these sculptures are intended to uh, resemble Colorado wildflowers by day and You'll see what they look like by night, gently glowing torches uh, gliding the, guiding the way along Alameda. So it'll be quite, uh, quite interesting. This piece, uh, uh, it's called American Primitive, located at Young American Center for Financial Education. It's actually been installed. Uh, landscaping will be placed early next week, uh, and then we'll have a dedication at some point in the future. Um, we were looking for something to do at this location. Uh, this is, is really the sidewalk by Young American Center is the eastern entrance to Belmar. It's the non-motorized entrance. So if you sit there and watch all day, which I'm sure you know, probably you have lots of time to do that, you will notice um, bicycles, uh, pedestrians, skateboarders, all manner of non-motorized transportation. People use that as the entrance to Belmar. Um, and so we thought that would, um, partner, we would partner with Young American Center to get that done. And uh, we'll have to come back and see it when the landscaping is finished. Uh, our corridor murals program, Yes, we're kind of copying our, our cousins on West Colfax, but it's long been in our, our plan to add murals to the, uh, to the art culture of, of Alameda. And we've gotten two done so far. This one at the Village Roaster in May and uh, Panaderia Rodriguez in September. And we're, we're very excited about this program. We worked closely with the business owners to make sure that the mural that was uh, placed there was um, something that they felt was important, that there they was an image that reflected community, that reflected something very positive um, about West Alameda and about their businesses. And uh, we're particularly excited about the one that we just finished at Panaderia Rodriguez, worked closely with the owner, Mr. Francisco Padilla, um, to come up with a design that he liked. And he was interested in something that would reflect his birthplace in Mexico and that would also be uh, of interest to the uh, Lakewood's um, very large Latino community. Uh, the next one, where am I? Can anybody guess? <laughs> I should have had a prize, I guess. Whole Foods, Chewy's, cross street from. Yes, it's, it's in the parking lot by Chewy's. So there's a Belmar Park, the Whole Foods parking garage. Uh, and it's gonna be our largest mural to date. It's gonna take up all three of those concrete panels and it will be a panoramic view of the history of West Alameda and Belmar. Um, and it'll probably be done by November 1st. We're hoping to get it before the first snow flies. Um, so we'll see. I'll give, get you an update on that later. Uh, everything is in place. He just needs to start doing the work. We just got our last permit today. Okay. And let's see. Public art restoration and maintenance. One of the things we, I found when I came into this job was that um, 
metal does actually wear if you put it out in the sunlight and the wind and the hail. Uh, and so we've gone through and inventoried all of our pieces and started a restoration program. This is a good example. Um, it's called a girl's best friend in front of DNLE Bridal before and after. You can see it was quite rusted before and now it's been restored to its original grandeur. Um, we're going to do that with several more. Um, the one you might have noticed is no longer is missing is Joyfully Dancing, which is in the roundabout by the library. That will be back the second week in October. It's a colorful piece that had to be taken out, powder coated, and painted, and it will it will return. Um, other street beautification programs, holiday banners in Belmar. Um, we were unable to do banners on the light poles on Alameda itself because of um, issues and the policies followed by XL Energy. So we decided to, to uh, work on a partnership with Belmar because they had the poles, they had the brackets, everything was ready, all they needed was the banners. Now, with the Alameda Streetscape project, um, I don't wanna say nearing completion, nearing completion in the Belmar area, or getting closer to it, um, ultimately we will be able to place banners on Alameda there which will have a nice visual impact. Art and ordinary places, this is literally just a program we dreamed up. Uh, and that's just to take things that are just there for, your, for some kind of a functional purpose. In this case, porta potty screens. Um, the Mile High Church, uh, when we have our, our farmer's market at, uh, in the Mile High Church parking lot, they wanted some kind of a screen around the porta potties. So we got them a screen, we built them a screen last year. We thought, you know, it just looks boring. So let's put some artwork on it. So um, we were going to do that with some other, other things as well. So there's seven hummingbirds there, and you only have one more week. Uh, the farmer's market closes this coming Saturday, but then the, the um, hummingbirds will be moved to other locations uh, where the public will be able to enjoy them. And let's see. And just kind of a summary of uh, what's in our plan in terms of priorities over the next year. Uh, landscape maintenance as the Alameda Streetscape, pro streetscape Project excuse me, continues to move along uh, ultimately, the bid will take over the maintenance of the softscape, so the plants and the trees. Um, once that project is completed, once that landscaping has been accepted as um, you know having taken, so in other words, once the warranty expires on it, that's something that we're still working on. Uh, it's not finalized at this point. Arts along Alameda, three to five new sculpture locations in the next year. We actually currently own some of those sculptures already, but they we have to finish the details and where they're going to be placed. Uh, corridor murals, two to three new locations. Sidewalk art, this is artwork that's actually sandblasted into the sidewalk. Um, and we're looking at a couple of key intersections, Teller and Alameda and Wadsworth and Alameda. These will be images of Lakewood's history. So animals, um, agricultural history, uh, the probably, probably going to be a dinosaur in there. Um, uh, Belmar itself, the old Villa Italia, its logo. So we've already seen the designs, and it's, uh, we obviously have to wait for the concrete to cure at Teller and Alameda before we'd be able to do that there. Um, art in ordinary places, um, bus shelters, um, we're going to be looking at uh, painting those uh, sometime in the next year. We're already starting to work with some artists on getting that going. Sign engine wayfinding program, it's kind of an ongoing planning process. As the streetscape project is completed, we're going to want signage to go with that. And so we're looking at what that's going to, what that's going to look like. Um, pocket park sunshades at the three existing benches. So we have three sets of benches on Alameda. So I won't quiz you and ask you where they are. But one of them is just east of, just west of Benton. One is at the Easter Seals property, and one is at Pierce, kind of down the hill. Um, currently, they they do get some use, but it gets really hot in the summer. So we're looking at. Uh, putting some sunshades at those locations to make them nice places for people to stop and linger and enjoy themselves. And that's a relatively low hanging fruit. And then finally, business grants. We're looking at targeted business grants to help out some of the areas on the corridor that really need help the most. Some areas obviously are thriving. They don't really need business grants for Belmar, but they do need them certainly further to the east. And corridor safety. This is kind of an ongoing thing, partnership with the Liquid Police Department. Um, a monthly community meetings for Alameda Gateway, we always have uh, updates from our Lakewood police on ongoing crime trends, uh, advice from uh, our police agents on how to best to protect yourself. Graffiti reporting and removal is an ongoing process as well. And thank you very much, and I'm happy to take any questions. All right, Mr. Quinn. Very nice job. A lot thank of you. fun things going on. Any questions? Or comments? Yes. 
Sure. Oh, okay. your your light's not on. Oh, I'm sorry. I That's all right. We got you. Not on the light. <laughs> nice, nice presentation, Tom. Do you have a a date when all of the construction on Alameda will be complete? Um, I don't. Um, and I, I would say Robert would know more about that, but I know that it's an ongoing process, so I don't think they know for sure when it's actually going to be done. Thank you. Um, yes. I wish I had a better answer right now, but no, it's fine. there that's will fine. be an answer at some point. That's all I can promise you. That's honest. That's all I want. Thank you. Thank you. Or there'll be an end at some point. <laughs> there, there will be an end to it one way or the other, yes. Councilor Abel? It's a nice presentation. Uh, and your budget... Uh, is very explanatory, brief and to the point, and uh, very complete. It's one page. Our budget was 400 pages. Could we get you to do our budget <laughs> next year? <laughs> no, it is uh, very well detailed. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Councilor Goodwin. Just want to say thank you. Um, this is a great presentation. It's exciting to see the art that's coming into the corridor. Um, so just appreciate all the work to make Lakewood a better place. Thank you. Councilor Vincent. Okay. I just want to say I saw some puzzled looks on this council when you talked about Villa Italia. So are you going to have an explanation of what a Villa Italia is on these things? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, what we wanted to do was, was to reflect the history of the area. And we know Villa Italia is a, you know, is a great memory for a lot of people. So what, in, what we did was we found something that looks like the logo, is, was the logo of Villa Italia at the time it opened. So that will be the image. And it'll show the years that Villa Italia was opened, was open. Yeah. So you have a, oh, sorry. No, no, so you have a, a monthly meeting, which is the third? No, you're the It's first. always the first, first Wednesday. You're the first Wednesday. Yeah. And you rotate locations? We do, yes. Okay. So this next month, it'll be October 3rd at the, the Belmar Library at 7.30 a.m. Well, again, well done. Uh, we appreciate the partnership. We appreciate uh, all that the, the bid and, and the association do to really promote the corridor. Uh, I think it really advances the mission of the city in a way that, you know, I, I shouldn't say shifts the burden, but it shifts the burden. You guys carry the burden, but you're making uh, two of our, our most used and storied corridors really come back to life after a lot of years. So well done. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Oh, and I am supposed to introduce Mr. Bill Marino next from West Colfax. Sorry, Mr. Marino. Kevin Yoshida, I'm sorry. Kevin is actually going to present first for West Colfax. They got them mixed up. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Mr. Mayor, City Council, you know I really like coming to talk to you. Um, we're going to spend a, f a few minutes. As uh, talking about the Lakewood West Colfax Business Improvement District, but it's going to be a little different this time. Um, typically, we come in and we talk about what happened last year and where we're headed. Uh, we did give you a fairly significant document that I'm, I'm sure that you all reviewed. We also have baked into the, our formation a five-year review. Uh, so this is our five-year review. So I'm going to kick things off and just kind of make a, a quick pass through the operating plan and budget, hit some highlights. Then I'm going to turn it over to the bid board president, Kevin Yoshida, and then I'll come back and wrap things up. Let's see here. Oh, there it is. It's right behind the mayor's head. I'm looking for the, there you go. I don't think that's it. So. I'm going to go over here. Using arrows. Yep. There we go. We'll work it out one way or the other. So everywhere I go, before I start whatever presentation I'm going to give, I always talk about all three of our organizations. So I'm not going to stop doing it. Uh, you know about the bid. Uh, Mr. Quinn did a nice job of giving that background. 40 West Arts is a state certified creative district along West Colfax. It's a 501c3 nonprofit. 
and I hope you all know about the West Colfax Community Association. It's our business and community group that's a 501c6. We're all focused on making just a little bit of progress every single day because our goal is to continue to make a difference as we re-energize the historic West Colfax Avenue. I gave you our quick agenda for the day, so I'm just going to move past that and hit, get right into some of the meat here. So before we talk about next year, I want to take a talk about last year. And we're still in the middle of 2018. So this is a quick snapshot on the, um, hold on one second, uh, of the focus areas that we presented to you last year. So you can see that all of these programs are in a, either on track, complete, in progress, or needs help. Um, if you want to go back and look at last year's plan, all of the details are, are there. I, I'd like to just mention the two that aren't where I'd like them to be. The West Colfax Ambassador Program and Visitor Center, we, we fell a little short of where we hoped to be. Uh, we've not given up on this. We still think that at some point we'll have a visitor center. Um, but as, as I think all of you know, we lost a significant ambassador this year in Bob Otteby. Um, he and his wife, Chris, were integral parts of this program. And uh, with his loss, we, we've taken a bit of a pause. But we're going to continue the work in his honor. And uh, our commitment is that we will have the, the ambassador program will continue and we will work towards a visitor center in the future. The other one I'm, I'm certain you're well aware of, the Loveland House on Harlan, just off of Colfax. We worked very hard together to try to find a public-private partnership to save the Loveland House. We've not given up. We think there's a possibility that maybe if the stars align, maybe if we work a little harder, maybe there's a way we could acquire that property someday and turn it into just a magnificent little pocket park along the art line on West Colfax. If you'd like me to come back and talk about all the reasons that that's a good idea, please invite me, because be, I'd be delighted to do that. The rest of it, I think, is self-explanatory. If there's any questions when we get uh, further on, I'd be delighted to, to answer them. So I'm going to just do some quick budget snapshots. This is a, a direct screenshot from the, from the um, longer, uh, longer narrative. You can see that uh, our, our revenues from uh, for this coming year are actually down about $1,400 from the uh, from the mill levy. Our mill levy is a five mill. Uh, we went through the same process as our big brothers over in Alameda. Um, so you can see we have about a half a million dollar budget. It breaks down like in this pie chart and where the revenue comes from. <coughs> Uh, so, you, as you can see, the vast majority of our revenue comes from the mill levy. Uh, we work very hard to attract gra grants and other revenue through IGAs uh, to help continue to, to fund different programs. And then we do manage some rents to try to keep some of the rents affordable for more of our creative enterprises. So if you see um, our rents here on the revenue side and our expenses, you'll see it's a little higher on the expense side. Um, some of that's for our own purposes to have a place to conduct business, but also in, in what we underwrite as a business improvement district to stimulate that catalytic impact of arts and culture. And again, this is a screenshot directly from the same budget that's in your packet. Um, we're, we're trying to keep our, uh, our programming investment as high as possible as we continue to try to drive down costs on the G&A side. And this year we were actually able to reduce the overall G&A and add that money uh, to our programming budget. Here's what it looks like. Uh, and if you look at this pie chart, and you look at 64% of the revenue uh, being spent on programs, you could actually add the rent revenue into that as well because that, that funds 40 West Studios and 40 West Gallery. Um, and I'm going to mention to you a something we call an impact index that kind of measures our performance as an organization. That's where I'm going to wrap up. But you can see our G&A is 6%. Um, the other number there, that's a baked-in number. 
that we have to hold money aside for the treasury fee for the county collecting the money and then a contingency fee as part of the budget, that will all get reinvested back into the corridor. So that's another 4% that will go into programming. These are our focus areas for 2019. You'll recognize many of them. Um, this isn't all that we do, but these are where we try to identify very clear metrics. As you look through um, the focus areas that I think is on page seven through 12 of, of the document I provided, each of those are described. Uh, there's a purpose and there's a set of metrics that are associated with them. I'm not gonna go through each one of them. Um, the details are there. I'm happy to answer any questions at the end. This is that uh, impact index. So being a bit of a geek and, and learning more and more about nonprofits and trying to make sure that our, our impact is measured, we looked at the, the amount of money that's collected from public sources and then compare that to the money that goes into programming. And it, it, as I'm sure many of you are familiar with nonprofits, if your ratio is somewhere around 80-20, if your G&A is less than 20% and 80% of your revenue is going into programming, that's typically thought to be pretty darn good. Because of the way we've set this up, we're actually more of a one-to-one -one, where we're spending as much that we collect on programming and that's because of some of the grants and other IGAs. So as you look across 2016 through 2019, you can see that we've always been uh, at one-to-one -one or even higher. With that, it's my pleasure to turn it over to Kevin Yoshida. Kevin is a volunteer. He's the president of our board. He makes an enormous difference in our community in both his professional capacity as an urban designer and architect, but mostly as an advocate for West Colfax Avenue and all that we do. So Kevin, I'll turn it over to you. Good evening, welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody for your time. I'm um, a little bit jealous of uh, Mr. Quinn's presentation and that we usually get to show you some fun pictures, uh, but we thought it was important um, in our five-year look back to really collect some, some data. So I'm gonna walk through some um, numbers that we've collected, but uh, I promise they'll be graphically interesting at least. <laughs> um, so uh, it's a bit of a synopsis and a little bit more of our, our background and foundations. Um, we, we thought we'd put together some dates as, as, as important benchmarks here. And uh, going back to uh, uh, 2004 and 2006, when uh, the initiative was known as the Blue Blue Ribbon Panel Committee focused on West, West Colfax to the bid formation and then um, some dates along the way, including the, our, the certification of 40 West Arts as a, uh, at a state level as a Colorado uh, certified district by the Office of Economic Development and International Trade from the governor's office. Um, and that's a pretty proud family. That's one of, uh, in select group, that's, that's one, I think we were the 11th to be certified and uh, the number has now grown to 21 certified districts and much like the core partnership here uh, with the city of, of Lakewood Economic Development arm, um, the state very much views uh, creative districts the same way, that they, they're, they, they're catalytic, they spur growth and that they're a good, um, uh, a precursor to um, revitalization and growth. Um, in thinking about business improvement districts as a mechanism, um, you know, we also thought it was important to, to look at what other cities are doing, and, and we're in good company. Uh, Lakewood, uh, as well as Denver, use business improvement districts as a mechanism to be boots on the ground and and uh, have direct impact on some of the smaller localized communities and commercial corridors. Uh, so we're in good company with uh, uh, one, two, three, four other uh, business improvements in, in, in Denver, and we're all linked together by this notion of uh, the cultural importance and economic economic importance that uh, uh, Highway 40 w once had, and we're, we're all linking arms to revitalize that and keep that moving forward. Um, we've been front interview regularly. Uh, you've helped us, helped us uh, manifest um, and memorialize documents that have helped guide that growth all the way back to the original action plan, uh, to urban design and placemaking uh, initiatives, as well as our current guiding document, which is the 2040 uh, vision plan um, from a couple of years ago. And uh, that's uh, certainly available online on, at the city website, and that's the cover to look for if you wanna do a, a deeper dive into that. 
Um, here's some of the, the uh, five-year synopsis that we've collected under our, our now section here. So um, one of the analogies we use regularly is that the Business Improvement District is the intel inside, the sticker on the computer that drives everything, and our programming um, outreach arms being 40 West and WCCA, as Mr. Quinn and, and Mr. Marino both described. So um, one of the interesting things, and this isn't a comprehensive list, but uh, just looking at the people um, and organizations who have come to visit Lakewood and West Colfax and uh, learn, get a peek under the hood and learn about what's going on from an insider standpoint, um, uh, governments uh, th th throughout the states have, have come looking throughout uh, um, uh, the, the, the state, other cities, other similar sized cities, bigger cities, smaller cities um, are all very interested in learning more about revitalization and, and we're happy to tell our story and help them connect, connect them with resources and ideas um, at any point. Uh, one of our uh, first metrics uh, is sales tax collection. Um, you know, this one is uh, shows good, strong growth. Um, the one number I don't have, but I'd like to get some day, is looking back over the 30-year decline period of, of anybody who's been here and can remember. Um, it's remarkable to have steady growth even. So this is um, incremental and uh, shows you know, strength and, and health and a little bit of uh, the just calling out the um, incremental um, growths over the years and some of the spurts up up 13 percent over that five-year period uh, says commercial property values another good uh, metric to keep track of um, we both you deal with it regularly here too it's a double-edged sword um, it, it should, certainly is a good sign of prosperity but we like many businesses and, and property owners also feel the the pain of an unexpected bill coming uh, in but uh, it is a generally a good sign so uh, that's been growing um, you know up 33 percent this last year and up 51 percent over the uh, five-year period um, interesting to to look at next to that previous slide as well as one of my favorite slides is we've been able to track creative enterprises in the district so um, from 36 to 154 um, even though the 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 climate of property values uh, has a certain arc to it um, we're still very attractive to uh, small businesses and entrepreneurial enterprises to 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 grow so uh, we're up uh, almost 300 percent there in that five-year period uh, focusing on 40 West and some metrics that are relative to their their world, this this is the only pretty picture of one that we usually do a deep dive on with you there. But um, Alexis Moore has been in front of you regularly, updating you on the the art line and its development, and we're really excited about how that's uh, knitting our parks together and creating a four mile art experience that the whole city can and outside of the city can come and take part in. Um, as part of some of our grant applications and, and other uh, metrics we've put together, we, we've uh, synopsized creative district attendance. Uh, so that's been growing at a great rate as well, um, up over 30% um, in that same period. So we're proud of that number. And uh, uh, the uh, um, what's happening in the district, that's what this slide is about. So it, it, the, when, when it was first getting started, um, you know, about 60 events over the course of the year, but if you think about that certification timeline in that 2014-2015, we pivoted to um, having one event in the corridor a day that you could find, and now we're well over that. Um, so this tally was, was uh, recent uh, relative to an application I'm gonna tell you about in just a couple minutes here. Uh, WCCA, our uh, merchant association, uh, membership is the best way to look at let that. Many of you attend or have attended our meetings at some point during the year on that. Uh, we started out in 2014 with a, a membership of 62. Um, we're now at 105 when we did this tally, and I think 109 I heard recently. Um, an example of some of the other uh, uh, programming and impact um, projects that the w WCCA has undertaken. We continue to reinforce our core, but also think about um, the, the, the new frontiers and the new businesses that are forming outside of our district proper and how can we help. So the business beautification project, uh, Mint and Serif, uh, helped them work on a patio, and uh, Rockley Music helped them beautify the, the front lawn area there that they had. 
and another program that we've been able to partnership in, in looking east with the Edgewater Collective Group, um, uh, revitalizing one of the um, trailers uh, for teachers' use and, and to really become a nurturing space to help support our teachers as they um, start the school year here. So we're very proud to um, be making new connections um, both in and outside the corridor. I uh, wanted to uh, thank thank this body as as well as uh, the re in some recent acknowledgments. Um, uh, WCCA received the Mayor's Inspiration Award last week here. Um, we've been acknowledged this year by the Americans for the Arts as well as uh, this was the the metric I was mentioning earlier. Um, Forty West is on track to be the first uh, certified creative district to receive Tier Three SCFD funding. And in that five-year look back, inevitably, um, we, f from a board standpoint, uh, wanted to make sure that we um, put ideas forward in terms of be best practices. So we, we have the 2040 vision plan that's our uh, generational document that'll, that'll guide our, our work. Uh, but this five-year look back was very important. So um, we're definitely committed to uh, looking at that incremental s snapshot and measuring our success. Um, I understand we're on the consent agenda, so happy uh, to come back annually as we do now and update you on our progress. Um, we think that's an important part. And um, for the, 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 those monies, we, we deploy to uh, uh, all of our programming partners um, to put some more regular reporting metrics um, into how those report, boards report to uh, the Business Improvement District Board. Uh, and just to end, this is the three sheets of this are in your packet, um, but uh, all that impact is really measured by individual stories and, and individual businesses and, and families taking, taking risks and, 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 and starting uh, a, new, a new venture or moving to a new place. And this quote from, from Anthony, the owner of uh, Westfax, um, really encapsulated a lot of that. He, he, he captured the um, energy that he stepped into. And uh, for him, it was about embracing it and, and uh, uh, at all levels, both, both as a businessman and as, and as a community member and um, rolling with, with, the, with this uh, tide that will lift all of us. So with that, I'm going to turn it back, back to Mr. Marino to close and answer questions. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. So you know we like pretty pictures. Uh, and usually we present you many of them. I'm hoping most of you have this already, but I'm going to leave a set for you. There's lots of great stories. If you want to know what we've done in the last year, we try to tell our story in a journalistic way and then point, um, point to the future. So there, there's one for everybody. If you already have one, give it to a friend. As we wrap up here, uh, folks often ask me, you know, what makes the biggest difference? What happened? How did you get progress? How did you create momentum? And we have great stories to tell and just not enough time always to tell them here. Um, you know the story of these three organizations, but where I always end that story when I get that question is right here. We are so grateful for the support that we've gotten from our city. We couldn't do it without you. Um, from the staff level, uh, at, at every level of staff, from the, the top of the management team all the way down to the worker bees, they have helped us immeasurably throughout the years. I, w I was there during that first action plan in 2004, 2005, and 2006, where it was just a dream that we could have an arts district. It was a dream on whether we could have a business improvement district or not. And we've made that progress because we have a city that cares. It makes a difference to have a partner like the city of Lakewood. It makes a difference when our policymakers can see the vision of what we're trying to do, when they can see neighborhood associations working with businesses, with artists working with the community to try to make a difference. So I want to make sure that you know and anybody that listens to this knows that we are grateful. We thank you so very much. But what you do matters. The decisions that you make will determine our trajectory in the future. We need some more growth in the West Colfax area because our businesses still need new customers. 
We understand that's a sensitive topic, but we're a commercial corridor. Um, by and large, a, as a transportation corridor, we want to protect our neighborhoods and respect everybody's rights, but we also need to, to grow and thrive those businesses like Anthony, who invested in West Colfax and put his life savings behind a brewery that's named after West Colfax and 40 West combined, the West Fax Brewing Company. So thank you for your support. Thank you for supporting us along the way. And we look forward to our continued partnership. Thanks very much. Right, great. Well, I guess thank I can stay for questions. Yeah, please. Uh, Councilor Harrison. I just wanted to say, um, it doesn't seem like it's been this long ago um, that um, Bunny Mom came to my office and told me a little bit about the bid and what was coming. Um, she's been gone, what, four years, five years? It'll be um, four years next, That's next what spring. I was thinking. Um, another real reason that um, the bid was as successful as it is, um, the two of you, you and Bunny, worked um, hand in hand, quite literally, to make everything work. Um, my hat's off to all that you've done, Bill, because without your leadership, I don't know that the bid could be as, as successful. You always have seen the stars in West Colfax, and I really admire that, and I wanted to just say thank you. Well said. Councillor Johnson. I just want to thank you both for a very nice presentation. And kudos to you. I could not be happier to see what's going on on Colfax happen. Your metrics speak for themselves. You're successful, and you're going to continue to be successful. And thank you. I appreciate it. Councilor Gutwein. Thank you for your vision um, and making it happen. And if you wanted to start uh, another bid in Ward 5, we would love that. <laughs> Let us know how we can help. <laughs> thank you. Councilor LeBeer. Yeah, I just want to thank uh, all of you for everything you do. Um, you know, I live off, I drive Lamar every single day, and I go down Alameda almost every other day. Um, and the impact is so obvious and it's really exciting to see. And I've said this before, um, my interaction and the way I interact with the city has changed and evolved as we've seen the sidewalks coming in and the art lines coming in and the murals coming in um, and the light rail and all the different changes that have been happening. Um, so I'm, I just appreciate everything you guys do. So thanks. Councilor Bita. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, I <clears throat> would echo what everyone else has, sa has said and appreciate all the hard work that you all are doing. So thank you for that. Um, also, I wanna just make sure I understand what we're doing here. Uh, as I understand it, we as a body are responsible for the oversight of the financial uh, running of, the, of these organizations. Is that my understanding, Mayor? The, the, we're, the, we're basically our, our responsibility is oversight and especially in the financial. Is that right? There, yeah. I mean, so all of this that we're hearing here is nice to know about how, you know, how you're operating and the great things you're doing. But I guess if we're going to um, discharge our function as an oversight, I, I want to ask you is, uh, does your budget that you've presented here, as far as you know, accurately represent um, the financial condition of your organization? Is there anything that we ought to know as a body that we don't know that we that are not in here? It does, and uh, I just add to your question: we have a board as well that is very active and detailed, that that knows where every dollar goes. So when we roll this up and present it to you. Um, it's um, it's 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 thought through, okay. and and well documented. Okay. And so you have great confidence in what's there as being the accurately. Yes, sir, I do. Okay. All right, and I'm going to ask the same question for the other organization, but we'll let you finish first. Great. Thank you. Yep, and and I, I should have started for for some folks. This is new, um, your first time approving this, so that's that's a great question. And, and in the summary statement, 
I'm just going to read this out loud for folks who are here with us tonight. But uh, business improvement district bids are primarily self-governing entities with significant authority, including the authority to incur debt and impose fees on commercial property owners within the district. And the district people or the, the bid is formed by opting in. So those property owners have to opt in a certain threshold. What is that threshold of property owners? In order to form a bid, there's both a petition and a special election. And in order to even get to special election, you have to have 50% of the property owners and 50% of the assessed value approved to opt in before you can even form a bid. That's great. It's great background. Uh, Title 31 of the Colorado Revised Statutes grants the city oversight authority and requires the city to review and approve each bid's operating plan and budget on an annual basis. This oversight role is critical to ensuring a positive public perception of bid activities. So before we call down Mr. Quinn, uh, Ms. Vincent, you still had a, a question or a comment for Mr. Marino? Yeah, both. Um, more of a comment. Um, I'd like to thank Kevin um, for reaching out to Mulholm School. That was really important, the design. And, and that shows your interaction with the, with the community outside of just up and down Colfax. Um, <clears throat> and what I think is important probably for council to understand is this is not just West Colfax and the, and the people who live on either side of it. There are so many things that are happening. In fact, I've been reached out to um, from people out of state to try to make some connections with what's happened here on, on Colfax and how it's re-energized a neighborhood. Um, what I think some of what you can really find out what's happening on West Colfax is I said I was blessed with two ears and only one mouth so I try to use them proportionally and um, with the two ears when I was at a, at a function the other day somebody said you know I don't know what's happening but we went along this green line thing to all the parks and that was just terrific and so of course you know I swelled up like I had done it personally and <laughs> mm -hmm. told them so I think it's it's important to hear those kind of things that happen. So that's all I wanted to say, and thank you. And we couldn't have done that without the support of the city. It was a joint grant that we got from the National Endowment of the Arts that a nonprofit and the city had to apply together. So that's something we linked arms on, and now it's an asset for our entire community. Please. Um, and you know I think that council is working on some initiatives to to probably assist West Colfax in some form or fashion with maybe some of the businesses around there who may not be as nice or as concerned. So we're trying to do things to help and assist in the moving forward. So. There's still plenty of work to do. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Quinn. Yes, so you, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you wanted to ask the question or. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. You, you heard my question, uh, Mr. Marino, and same thing. I know my colleagues and I have all looked at the packet, and it's very well done, very well presented. I appreciate that, and certainly I appreciate all the work you and your organization does as well, certainly from my perspective, since you're affecting, you know, our, our Ward 3, and um, so it's, it's great. But I think as, an over, as part of our oversight here, statutory oversight, I think it's only fair to ask you, is there anything about your presentation or what your organization that we need to know or, or is not included in there that would have an effect on the you know, day-to-day -day, uh, operating of your organization? No, everything is, uh, everything is included, and the budget is reviewed by our board of directors as well as we have a joint finance committee between uh, the Alameda Gateway Community Association and the Alameda Corridor bid. So it's also reviewed by the Finance Committee. I would point out just one other thing, just um, uh, and that is that all bids are required to file their audit, an audit annually. So we have to uh, submit an annual audit to the Colorado Department of Local Affairs. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, I'll ask for a motion on the consent agenda. Uh, Mayor Paul, I move for the acceptance of the minutes of the boards and commissions order all ordinances 
introduce on first reading to be published in the Denver Post with public hearing set for the date included in the ordinance and for adoption of resolution, all of which are included in the consent agenda items introduced into record by the city clerk. Second. I second. All right. Two fast ones. Motion a second. Any more discussion? Okay. I'm, I'm just going to say uh, just one last final word. And, and Ms. Marino, I appreciate your presentation. And I think uh, Councillor Harrison said it very well. If anybody has continued to dream and tell the story of West Colfax and what it can be and what it could be and what it's going to be, it's you. Day in and day out. And I know that there's been ups and downs, but we appreciate you. Kevin, we appreciate you. Former Councillor Cindy Barraway, who's head of WCCA right now. Um, we appreciate all you're doing as well as the folks in the Alameda corridor. These are very, very special, very unique corridors to our community. And um, you go about it day in and day out. And it is a partnership because we're all, we're all out there telling the story, trying to get businesses to move in, trying to talk to people and say, yeah, check out West Colfax. Check out where? No, seriously. And then you bring them out and they see what's going on. They see that art line. And I think the next phase when, when uh, Mr. Quinn and I had the opportunity to meet with Denver to talk about bike share, and now that's already almost something that's, you know, an ancient technology now that we have all these scooters coming to be. But the folks in Denver said you have to have something that's going to draw people and make people want to come. And if two areas have that ability to draw people and make people want to come, it's West Colfax and it's the Alameda uh, corridor. And that art line will be amazing when we can go take scooters and zoom all around the four and a half miles. So we'll have that conversation next week. <laughs> I'm getting some love over here on the left, I think. You should wait till the vote is made. <laughs> All right, so there's a motion and a second to pass the consent agenda. Please cast your votes. And that passes 11 ayes, 0 nays. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Clerk, please read item 10. Item 10, Ordinance 02018-17, oh, authorizing execution of a permanent easement across Sunset Park near West 12th Avenue and Miller Street, Lakewood, Colorado, to Daniel Sanitation District for a sanitary sewer and related facilities, and further authorizing a request to Jefferson County Open Space to subordinate its interest in a portion of Sunset Park to allow for the permanent easement to Daniel Sanitation District. All right, thank you very much. I'll now open the public hearing on item 10. Nobody has indicated a wish to speak. Anybody wish to speak? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and ask for a motion. I move for the adoption of Ordinance 0 2018 7 on second and final reading. No second yet. Could you just rephrase that to 2018 17? Ah. Uh. Then I move for the adoption of Ordinance 0 2018 17. I second. All right, motion in a second. Any discussion? Uh, Councilor Abel. I wanted to ask here, but our a certain city clerk made it really clear that uh, that would be way out of line. So. I'll I'll just say thank you for the hard work. Does she have money on an end time tonight or something? Because we can go. She's the ultimate power in this city. So. All right. With that, please cast your votes. And passes eleven I zero nays. All right. General business. Anything? All right. We'll move into reports. Had the opportunity, and last week was busy for a lot of folks up here, so uh, I know there were a lot of events that people wanted to get to and weren't able to do due to community meetings, but I had the opportunity to go to the Boys and Girls Club annual fundraiser, and they met their goal of $60,000, so that was fantastic. They came in a little bit shy, and the Elks Club said that they would help carry them up to $5,000 over, so... They might have gone over to 63000 So congratulations to them. Um, coming up in October, there will be an Action Center match, dollar for dollar, with the City of Lakewood up to 17000 So 
Um, keep that in mind. Let's get that done. And you will be receiving ballots pretty soon. I encourage you to be engaged, to read the whole thing, to start at the bottom and work your way up because everything that's really important is at the bottom, selfishly. And I would say as we get into election season, be cautious where you get your information. Uh, digital platforms, we we all heard about that. But really dig into who's putting the information out. And I would also stress even on Nextdoor, uh, I think Nextdoor has a great ability to inform but unfortunately has a great ability to misinform. So please check the facts. Thanks. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. I just have a couple of things. Real quick, uh, last Saturday we had a fantastic uh, Ward 3 meeting, and thank you for everybody coming. Also, tomorrow we are having our annual Veterans Fair at the Elks Club starting at 10 o'clock. Uh, please come, veterans. Um, you'll you'll find some great information. Uh, we can share some great information with you, and and uh, don't forget, like last year, uh, you know, I had to kind of hold my arm a little bit, but I got my uh, flu shot. So have a good day. All right, Councilor LeBeer. I forgot to mention this while uh, Mr. Marino was here, but I was driving down the street, and I saw. Um, someone digging in some trash and I was wondering what was going on and then the guy got out of the the trash can and looked up and it was Bill Marino cleaning it out so the last time I saw him I I said what were you doing with the trash he said uh, I was like don't you have somebody that you pay to to deal with that and he said well I just like doing it I like taking care of things myself so anyway funny story um, so he, those those people are definitely in the trenches doing the doing the work um, but I will say I went to the West Community Colfax Association meeting. It was a great meeting. Uh, they had their candidate forum, uh, met a lot of the candidates who are running for office, and uh, that, was, that was good. And that's another great thing that WCCA does, um, trying to put on those kind of forums. And then also went to the Boys and Girls Club. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to stay very long because we had a committee meeting, but I was glad I was able to drop by and say hi to a few people. So uh, thanks for that. Councilor Abel. We're having our Ward 1 monthly meeting October 6th at Holy Shepherd Church, 920 Kipling Street. Uh, we will have uh, a forum of our state office uh, candidates as well as a uh, brief description of the ballot issues that will be facing us in, at length in November. Thank you. Councilor Harrison. Oh, boy, am I ever excited to tell you about something that everyone can do this weekend. Um, you know how we love junk. Well, how about a beautiful junk sale held by the Action Center? If you want to get a little jump on your Christmas shopping or need have an empty garage that you want to fill, this is the perfect place to come. It will be at the Jeffco Fairgrounds um, Friday and Saturday. And let me tell you, there'll be at least two things you cannot live without. All proceeds go to help support the Action Center. So this is a great place to come and enjoy the day. Thank you. And I dropped off a load today, and so if someone wants to buy a shirt that says Mayor on it... <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Counselor <laughs> Skill. <laughs> just, just straight mayor in blue. Our, um, the two public, the two individuals who heard from public comment have left, but maybe they'll watch the recording and others that may have listened to those comments. Um, I am the chair of the Development Dialogue Committee. It's a committee that I am very proud of in that we spend a lot of time, not just here on Monday nights, but in preparing and attending those meetings. And folks, it ain't easy. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of different views on things, and it's, it's tough. I get a lot, I, you know, I wasn't forced to do this job. I did it, um, I wanted to do it, and I like doing it. Nobody put a gun to my head and said, you have to run for this. So I take it pretty serious, as you can imagine. I set out on that committee to make sure that it would be a legacy committee, that everything that we do on that committee was not simply the effects of some political wins that 
those winds, if they did change, that this would be something lasting. And I invited everybody to come to this committee, the Planning Commission in particular. Uh, their chair actually literally has a seat at the table. Uh, we've invited developers to come and speak and actually take part in it. We have the entire planning staff at times is there. Uh, we've got everybody. It's been a very well attended. One meeting we had 50, 60 people. It's a very well attended by the public. It's a very well attended meeting. Um, we've had, I think, five meetings, two hours, sometimes later apiece. And so far, we've dealt with nothing but mixed use. So we take that seriously. We've done a lot of homework on it. Nothing is arbitrary. But let me be clear. I made it a point that no planning commission recommendations would be usurped by this committee. None. We wouldn't touch them. We wouldn't modify them. That by charter and by law that those recommendations come from planning commission and they will come right to all of us here. The, the committee does not do that. The committee simply looks at those, looks at the body, looks at all of the issues that everybody has agreed there are problems with some of these mixed use zones and we've made recommendations. Sometimes we look at planning commission and say, hey, what'd you guys do? And we bounce off that. Sometimes we go a different direction, but this body will receive all of the planning commission's recommendations untouched. It will also receive recommendations made by the committee. And you can look at those and say, I don't know what Dave was doing and what all those committee members and Dana and, and Charlie and Jake were doing. We don't agree with that. We're gonna take planning commissions. And you might, and Mike, I, He's the sane one of the group. Um, you'll have a chance to do that. That's not what the committee is about. The committee is about taking very complex issues and trying to get a lot of different ideas. And I think we've done a good job at that. Um, so I just want to make clear, we are not usurping the role of the Planning Commission. So sorry for going off on that tangent, but um, I just wanted to be crystal clear about the committee. Thank you. So are you usurping? Mm -hmm. I just wasn't sure if you're clear. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Counselor Goo. <Gutwein>. Good night. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we are having our Ward 5 meeting on also October 6th. And we are having a sim very similar um, agenda. We are going to have some pros and cons for the local ballot initiatives. Um, and really want to make sure everyone feels informed and has a chance to ask questions um, and get information about all the very many important issues on your ballot this year. Um, also wanted to let my colleagues know and, and everyone um, in the community, uh, at our Dr. Cog meeting, we also had a chance to hear about um, some of the transportation and statewide transportation measures. And CDOT has put together um, a comparison of 109 and 110. Um, so if you're getting questions about how those funding, um, what those measures will fund if they are passed, um, it's a very informative and um, objective uh, presentation of those two items. So I will um, share that with you, and if you'd like to pass it forward, um, that would be great. great. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Franks. Thanks, Mayor Paul. Um, I just wanted to let the, the public know that um, I am the chair of the Housing Policy Committee, and we had a meeting last week in which we started to discuss scope, and I kind of wanted to piggyback off of what Councilor Skilling was saying. It's really important for the public to understand that there are a number of ideas about any one topic, and our committee has agreed that we will bring forth both the majority and the minority opinions. We're not going to hold things back from the entire body of of council so um, we are going to be creating something that isn't in place so uh, unlike where we have the zoning code which can be looked at we're going to be trying to decide what the scope and what the membership and what the directory of resources looks like for a housing policy committee and so we certainly encourage participation we don't see the numbers that the development dialogue in fact 
we have had either one or two community members. So we would certainly encourage folks, if you've got ideas, if you've came from a community that has a very mature housing policy uh, program in place, we're in that building stage. And so all ideas are welcome. The ideas are kind of sitting in documents so they can kind of germinate. But we will be doing the same thing where we will look at some things and we will say those are good ideas. We'll look at others and say they might need to be matured more. And we'll certainly discard some things at some point at the council level. But our commitment is to bring forth all of that information to the body of 11 and let those folks as a group, meaning us, decide what that housing policy committee um, looks like. And so just wanted to make sure folks really understand we are working hard to take in as much information as we can. And we certainly, as the housing policy, encourage people to attend our meeting and to also uh, send ideas to us. And being the chair, you can send those directly to me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Bita. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first of all, I want to second what Councillor Skilling said. He's absolutely correct on, on what he said about our committee, our uh, Development Dialogue Committee. And I would like to add, it's, it's a very difficult process. It's tedious, it's time consuming, and um, every, all the councilors on the committee take it very seriously. Um, we have a lot of input from our staff on, on the decisions we make. And I think that what I w want the public to understand is that you know, we have no desire to disrespect anything that the uh, Planning Commission does. They do a great job. But we have to come at it from a little different direction because we're the elected body. We're responsible for making the ultimate policy decisions. And some of those decisions that we're looking at, like the numbers that are being bracketed, they're clearly public policy decisions that revolve around, well, how much development do you want to encourage or discourage? And those numbers are going to reflect those kinds of policy decisions. And we're going to bring those to this body to let, let them ultimately decide that after, I'm sure, what will probably be a fairly robust discussion. So that's not intended in any way to disrespect the the, um, you know, the recommendations of the planning committee, but we have a different job and we're the elected officials and we have the ultimate responsibility of making those, you know, difficult public policy decisions and that's what we're trying to do, I think. And um, <clears throat> so anybody that, um, well, people just need to understand that, that we're just doing what we were elected to do. Councilor Vincent? Um. Since there's probably, looking at the clock, there's probably people still awake out there. Um, so I said I would do a plug. There's um, The Boys and Girls Club was just wonderful. And there's some of us who will be going to Riot Fest 7 this Saturday. Um, it's the only fundraiser that 40 West has for all of their programs. Um, you can go online to 40 West. 40 West and buy a ticket is $35. It's called a pop up, yeah, pop up cocktail party. And um, you go in, it's an empty building now for those of you who knew where Campus Cycles was, that's the building. And you go in, and I guess it's just gonna have pop up art throughout the thing and um, cocktails and food. And I guess I was told that people are gonna be hanging from the ceiling. I didn't know how to take that, but I think it should be fun. So, um, I, like I said, it's their only fundraiser. So, if you guys can see your way to go out there, um, you'd be welcome. They usually are a lot of fun. Councillor Johnson? May I give the legislative report now? You bet. Okay. I am chairman of the legislative committee, and... Um, this council voted a year ago that this committee report to you as a body, and which is appropriate. Um, this committee is, is uh, responsible for looking at legislation that comes at the State House and reviewing bills. We are comprised of five members plus one person from the city administration, basically. Uh, we have one member from every ward. And Ben Goldstein will be working with me now um, 
regarding uh, putting together uh, the legislative meetings that uh, I used to meet with Nanette weekly on. I just want to say that this is a committee that I take extremely seriously in that we, unlike your other committees, we actually go forward with our recommendations to the State House. So we don't come to you and tell you what our recommendations are. And we, as a body, the five of us, the six of us, actually look at about 65, 70 bills each session. Um, and we come to ideas on how we think about those bills, but because of the seriousness of what we are doing, it has been important to me that we do not just go forward willy-nilly and throw our ammunition out there. I'm very careful that we keep basically our gunpowder dry, if you will. This last session, we had seven bills go forward to our state legislators. Four of them we strongly uh, opposed. Three of them we strongly supported. All of them went in the direction that we advocated for. I think that shows a very good 100%, um, if you will, batting record. And I'm proud of the work that this committee does. Um, Ben and I have been working on uh, looking at a, an official document that has never been in place before. It's an idea that he has brought from his experience at the city of Westminster, and it's a, a nicely written document. I've been spending actually quite a few hours on uh, looking at it that it would fit the needs of Lakewood. Basically, what it will do will give us a structure, if you will, uh, regarding which bills we will be looking at, which is frankly something we've never had. Uh, we look at uh, a variety of bills. Uh, so we'll be working on that, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually excited about it. I think it's a document that will probably come forward to you for a vote at some point. Uh, but I just wanted to get it out there that um, we, we batted 100%, gang. And I'm proud of your work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for that update. And, and from time to time, you've updated uh, the community as well with, with different things. So we appreciate your passion and your leadership. And thank you to the committee as well. Uh, Ms. Greer, anything? Mr. Graham? Mr. Goldstein? All right. We will adjourn at 845. Thank you to our police agent who's on his day off and wanted a little extra, so thanks for taking care of us. Yeah.